everyday viewers agricultural science for SS3. This work is being taught according to the Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council, the NERDC curriculum. And first, I'll be talking about the benefits of studying agricultural science. First, it gives you an awareness of crops and animals in your environment. Crops in the sense that the plants that are relevant for feeding, you get to know more about them, their cultivation, the way they harvest them, the way to keep them and make it more beneficial for you, as well as the animals that are useful for consumption for man. Then the next one is that it helps you with the benefits. It benefits your crop and animals, how you can improve their yield and maximize income, how you can take care of your plants and your animals to give you a better yield than what you've been having before. Agricultural science will give you that awareness. Also, it helps you to take it helps you with the knowledge of taking care of your animals, their hygiene, cleanliness, prevention and control of diseases, as well as how to prevent and control diseases on your farmland, which will reduce your yield. Also, the study of agricultural science will help you with the selling aspect, that is the marketing aspect of your of your produce, how to market your crops and your animals. It will also help you to be a better person in the sense that you'll be able you can as an agricultural science student be able to start a Greek in a small scale for your own benefit in terms in the terms of increasing or giving you a new stream of income even as a student. Then the courses you can study with agricultural science. First agricultural education like I'm doing for you can educate other people about agricultural science, then agricultural economics and extension, agricultural extension and rural management or rural development, plant breeding and seed genetics, where you talk about how you crossbreed your plants, then work on their genetics to give you better yield or better seeds, better seeds and varieties. Then you can also study crop protection how you take care of your crops, then pasture and rain management, talking about your animals and the feed that you give them, animal production and health, how you can increase or improve the production of your animals and take care of them, animal breeding and seed genetics, and so on. There are a lot of courses on the agriculture that you can study, a lot of them. Then the available jobs you can do with a Greek, you can be an agri teacher or lecturer, you can be an agricultural economist. When you study agri-economics, you can be an agricultural ex um, extension person. That is, you, the research that is being carried out, you can take it to the people in the rural area as they are the ones that really do the farming. So you can educate farmers on what to do, what not to do, the better ways of doing things in agri. So those are the things you can do with agri science and also you can be a farmer, you can be a practicing farmer, you can be into fishing, into poultry, into farming, large scale, small scale, whatever scale you want to do. So it's really a big thing when you get down to do agri. We increase your source of income, whether you are doing a full time practice or even a part time practice as an agricultural student. Now the cost breakdown, what we'll be doing in this class the SS3 syllabus of agricultural science. See, we have it in five teams. Team one, crop production. And under that, we're talking about crop improvements. Then team two, that is the animal science. We're talking about animal improvements. Then animal health management. Also, we're talking about aquaculture, apiculture, or beekeeping. Then under the third team, we'll be talking about agri economics and extension. So we'll be talking about the agricultural finance, we'll talk about farm records and accounts, we'll talk about marketing of agricultural products, then we'll talk about agricultural insurance and also agricultural extension. Now to the first thing, crop improvement. Crop improvement is a process of producing new varieties of crops with better qualities than their ancestors or parents in a number of ways or features. 
Now, what we do in crop improvements is to make the crops better than what we have in the parent plants. So, the process whereby we do this is called crop improvement, whereby new varieties of crop are produced and they are better than their ancestors or their parents. It is the progress or the efforts in areas of improving our native crops through breeding. So when we improve the uh, crops, maybe by their yield, the size, then the their life cycle, the number of days or months they spend in the farm before they get to the market. So those are the things that we do in crop improvement. It is also known as plant breeding. So you can also say crop improvement. You can also call it plant breeding. Then one thing about this crop improvement is that it's, uh, the new plant varieties are always far better than, they are, than the old ones, so they are better. We have an improved yield under crop improvements. The aims of crop imp improvements are as follows. First, is to produce crops with early maturity period. So, instead of a particular crop that we use that takes six months before it is ready for harvest, by the time it is improved upon, you can have it harvested in three months or four months thereabouts. So it gives it an early maturity period. Then the next one is that we have crops with high yield or productivity without loss of quality. The yield has increased. Instead of getting 500 kilograms from a particular number of seed, Still planting the same number of seeds, you are now getting like 700 or 1,000 kilograms. So it, it, it has given us a high yield of, of seed without reducing the quality. We do, the quality is not reduced, whereby, and also the high yield is there. Now, another aim of crop improvement is resistance to various diseases and pest attack. By the time we improve, we work on the crop and it is improved. The, the new plants or the seed that we have is now resistant to, a, to various, disease, various diseases and the attack of pests. So the crop is now better. Another aim of crop improvement is that such crops have adaptive capacity to climate, soil, and other environmental changes. So they can adapt. To, what, to climatic change, to soil change, and other environmental change. Another aim of crop improvement is to increase the protein content so it is better in nutritious value, then the taste of fruits, the taste is better, the color, the size is improved on. Next is that there is high, it, it, is, it is able to meet the high market standard that is set by the international market. So, the crop that has been worked upon, the improved crop now, has high market standard. So it is able to meet the international market standard. And last but not the least of the hands of crop improvement I'm talking about is that it, is, it has easy harvesting. You can harvest it with ease. So that is, those are the aims. These are the aims of crop improvement. The methods of crop improvement. We have three major methods that a breeder uses to improve his crops. First is introduction, second selection, and third is the breeding. Introduction, selection, and breeding. Those are the three methods of crop improvement. So we'll be looking into these three in details. Introduction. Introduction is a process of bringing new crops from their countries of origin to new countries. So, for instance, you have a crop being grown in Nigeria, that is its origin country. Then you are now taking it to China, for instance, that is the new country. So, when you are taking a new crop from its country of origin to a new country, say you are introducing that crop. The newly introduced crops are called exotic crops while the original native crops are called the indigenous crops of local cultivars. Like the example I made, taking a crop from Nigeria to China. So that crop in Nigeria is called indigenous crop because Nigeria is its origin. Now, in China, it is called an exotic crop. So that's the difference. It is exotic to, to China, 
but because Nigeria is its origin, it is indigenous to Nigeria. So that's the difference. That's the difference in the name. Then the crops that are to be introduced must be certified to be disease free, and it must also pass the quarantine test before you bring in any crop to from a country to another. It must have passed through um, a place called quarantine. That's where you check the crop so that you are, not, you are sure that you are not bringing in diseases and pests into the country in the name of bringing a new crop. So it has to be certified disease free and it must pass the quarantine test at a particular time that is allocated.